Hi, welcome to the All Things LGBTQ interview show, where we interview LGBTQ guests who are making important contributions to our communities. All Things LGBTQ is taped at Orca Media in Montpelier, Vermont, which we recognize as being unceded indigenous land. Thanks for joining us and enjoy the show. Approximately a year ago, a new community center opened in Barrie, Rainbow Bridge. And the intention was to create safe space in Barrie for various groups to meet with a specific outreach to the LGBTQ plus community. Rainbow Bridge has seen some recent changes. So we thought it might be time to invite the current executive director to talk to us about Rainbow Bridge and what are the programs and services they're offering and the vision for the year ahead. So mm -hmm. help me welcome for a first time, Sean Trader, welcome. Hi, thank you, Keith. <laughs> So why don't we start with a little bit about you? You know, how did you happen to be in Vermont, in Barrie, and what brought you to Rainbow Bridge? All right. Yeah, so thank you for having me. My name is Sean Trader. I am the new executive director at the Rainbow Bridge Community Center. I'm an out and proud non-binary trans woman, and I use she, her, and they pronouns. And let's see, I've been in Vermont for about a decade now. I'm a kind of a Florida person originally. I moved around a little bit, but I'm from Clearwater St. Pete area in Florida. And how I got here to put it short is we sold all our belongings, bought a camper and traveled along the Appalachian mountains living in state parks until we found a place that we thought was beautiful enough to convince us to stop moving. And that was right here in beautiful Vermont, and I'm so happy to be here. I was going to say, you went as far as you could on the Appalachian Trail until you ran out of gas, and that was Vermont. <laughs> yeah. Yes, there was some of that, too. <laughs> Let's be real here. Yeah, the money doesn't last forever when you're traveling like that. <laughs> so why Barry? So... I lived for a little bit in Colchester. I lived for five years in Waterbury. And it was about that time that I was looking to buy my first home. And Barry was affordable and seemed like a nice area. So we did that. And we um, settled on the house the day that the uh, lockdown hit, March 25th, uh, three years ago. So it was a weird time to come into the city. Um, you know, it was like no man's land, nobody was out. And I felt like, you know, I didn't really get to know anybody for the first year or two of the pandemic. And then when things started opening up and moving again, um, during that time period, I had come out as trans and I just wanted to get involved in my community and find something to do and give back. So I pretty much, found the closest LGBTQ nonprofit that I could and walked in and said, I want to volunteer to help out with your next event. And that led to me um, being a point person for our first event in the fall. And here we are, the rest is history, as they say. <laughs> okay, so stepping into the role of executive director, that's quite the transition from volunteering to help organize an event to taking over the organization itself. So what are the programs that were already in place when you stepped into your current position that you're looking at continuing? Yeah, um, approaching this role in the way that I did is kind of in line with my style. I'd like to know the... I like to know the first step. I want to know what my people are going through. Um, when I'm involved in an organization, it matters to me what the frontline workers are dealing with and handling just as much as the C-suite executives, um, because I know that it's in those frontline people that the, the brand is really made and the interactions and the purpose is really uh, made manifest. And so 
starting as a volunteer and kind of moving into this role uh, was important to me to approach it like that because there has been a learning curve. Um, my background is healthcare. I've worked in healthcare for 20 years. I was an LNA for the most part, and I've worked in every department in the hospital and spent about seven or eight years with orthopedics at UVM in South Burlington. And it was there that I decided to go back to school for healthcare administration for uh, my graduate degree. And those uh, skills have kind of had some play with how to run an organization. There's a lot about that. Um, I thought I might be the CEO of a hospital, um, but I am happy to be the CEO of this place here. Um, the need is great, as we know, from looking around the country and in our community. And there hasn't been anything more fulfilling in my life than doing this work right now. So I'm super proud of it. I could say, to answer your question, um, there was... Um, the beginnings of a trans group here. There was the beginnings of an adult LGBTQ group here. Um, my fantastic um, Stephanie Otten is also on my board. She's fantastic. And she started the team tween group here. She has an out child and wanted to create a resource where she couldn't find any. So those were kind of the gist of the groups. And I'm really happy to say that because of a big uptick in volunteer engagement. Um, we are, have a, been able to diversify our programming extensively. So now in addition to the team tween group, we have a team group. Um, the trans non-binary group has expanded. We had 19 people at our last meeting, which if you live in central Vermont and you're thinking there's no trans people here, think again, we are there. <laughs> we are here. Um, we also, in order to reach out to the LG, uh, pe people not in the LGBTQ community, we have a friends and family support group. So this is kind of like an allyship 101 group. This is for friends and family of LGBTQ folks, people struggling with questions that they have, someone they know, maybe they're LGBTQ. Uh, we had a lot of outreach from parents saying, help, I have a trans child and I don't know what to do. So if you fall into that category, the friends and family group is what you're looking for. And if you want to be a strong ally in general, that's the group you want to come to because we've got representatives such as myself and others who either are parents um, of LGBTQ kids or they are in some position that makes them able to speak on that topic. So I really suggest that one. Super happy to say that our newest group is probably the veterans group. So Paul came in here, he's a volunteer, he's fantastic, he's a veteran, and he wants to make sure that the LGBTQ veterans have a voice in this area. And of course we support him 100%. And so we have that group as well. And <laughs> the last group that we have is the sex positive group. So we have like a a body positivity and a sex positivity group that's also started by another member of our board, Heather. So we just have such fantastic crew um, and volunteers that have stepped up. And my role as ED has basically been to tell people the Rainbow Bridge Community Center will be what we make it. If you don't see a group or a program that fits you, come and talk to us because we want to make a space and a time for it, and you will have the full support of the board and other volunteers to help get it off the ground and make sure you're happy and comfortable and supported, and we want to make that happen. So it seems like a lot, and let me give you the list so you can share it with your viewers, well, but we have even more. <laughs> Well, I was going to say, I had noticed that on both the, your website and your Facebook page, there is an event listing where I can go, could go in and look at a calendar for the entire month, yes. see what groups were being offered on which days, and, you know, some information about, okay, what is the focus, et cetera. I noticed that there were like some game nights, and yeah. I wondered if you were also still doing the we're open, we have no specific group or purpose, it's just we're open for you to come in and just sort of hang out and have casual social time. Is that something that still is happening at Rainbow Bridge? 
Yeah, so maybe let's back up and talk about the mission of the Rainbow Bridge Community Center is to uplift the LGBTQ plus community. And we do that through a number of ways. We have direct action where we're helping LGBTQ people. And then we have indirect action, like how we're helping family and friends of LGBTQ folks. Um, I would say that most of our groups, um, all of the things we just discussed are really our peer support groups. Those are for LGBTQ folks, of course, with the exception of the friends and family group. And then our social nights, um, in addition to the groups, we have the socials. And those are um, a little more open. So we have like a queer game night, we have an RPG night, a writer's club, and a knitting club. Um, all these things are fun and a great place just to meet people and socialize. And the um, there, this is an LGBTQ plus drop-in center. So we are open seven days a week. You can come into this space. If you haven't seen it, I suggest you stop by. It is basically a big, comfy, gay living room that you can hang out in and do whatever you want as, so long as you're respecting the rules. <laughs> Uh, the use, the rules of use here, which are to remain respectful, obviously, and um, commit to, you know, living the values of the center, which again are to uplift humanity in general, empower people, empower personal liberation, and uh, ensure that the future is filled with LGBTQ joy. I would say that is the vision of the center. We want to make sure that the future for queer people is bright, open, happy, free, and powerful. So that's what we're shooting here for. So if you agree with those things, I welcome you to come down to the center and see what we've got going on. Okay, you said seven days a week. What hours? So Monday through Friday is 11 to 5. Okay. Uh, Saturday is 12 to 6 and Sunday is nine to 12 noon. Okay. So, and then in addition to all of that, most of the groups and most of the social clubs that we just referenced are happening after hours. So in addition to our normal hours, you will often find people here after hours participating in a group or a club. Now, initially you had lots of space on your walls so an invitation went out to local artists that they could come and display their works at Rainbow Bridge. Is that something you're still offering? So if, if I have a new collection of photography that I want to put up for people to, to look at and maybe give some feedback on, is that yes. still an option? It is, and I would just add to that that we're explicitly we want the space to be filled with lgbtq plus artists work you know and so the promotion and the sale of the work whatever you have whether it's a painting on the wall a sculpture whatever if you're an lgbtq plus artist we invite you to come down here and use the space um, because we want to share it with the community now that was a very active events calendar that you just shared. Are there some specific things that you're looking at spending some time to develop during the next year? And are there specific opportunities for volunteers or are there specific functions for which you would like to invite people to come volunteer? Yes, absolutely. Um, first, uh, we do love having the center open seven days a week. I do like to have a team of two people here at all times, just so there's always backup and support. Um, and we do, for the most part, we have that, but there are still some gaps in the schedule where we don't have the full team that we want. So if, you're, if you have even a half a day to volunteer to come down and operate the center, we would love to have you here. And I would say just um, email me at info at rainbowbridgevt.org for that, and, I'm, and we'll follow up on that for sure. And then in addition to the everyday operations of the space, we always have more ideas coming for groups. And I'll list a few if you don't mind. Oh, absolutely. Uh, because we are either looking for a facilitator or another facilitator or people that are interested in participating in the group. So our coming soon groups include an asexual, aromantic group, 
a survivors of sexual harm group, which we do have a licensed um, therapist offering to facilitate for us. So we're looking for another co-facilitator and people that are interested in that. We have um, an LGBTQ plus adults group. We have an LGBTQ plus seniors group for which we do have one facilitator, but again, we're looking for more support. We have a survivors of self-harm group and a polyamorous peer support group. Um, and then on the social side of things, we have a young volunteer here with a drama background that really wants to get a queer theater club started. So we are very excited about that. Um, we do have one facilitator and a local drama teacher that's willing to help it with some time. But if you're interested in doing theater, uh, we want you. And to give you an idea of how we're planning on using that um, at our events, at our functions, uh, we would love to do like a queer improv comedy sketch. So if you're interested in queer theater, that's the kind of things that we're thinking about doing, basically incorporating your work into our show so you can showcase what you're doing. So this all sounds absolutely amazing. So which leads me to, you must be engaging in some degree of fundraising. And yeah. I think there was an event that just happened, but there's another one occurring at the end of May for which Rainbow Bridge will be the beneficiary. People can go and watch and be supportive. But basically how can we, as the Central Vermont LGBTQ plus communities, support you yes before we move on to that one yes. but wait, there's more oh go <laughs> if i could because we also have committees at the rainbow bridge community center so if you are interested in the governance and the mission of the center and how it's run and what we're hoping to do here we have a space for you too so let me just quickly say we have an advocacy and outreach committee, which has a political action subcommittee. So we are interested in getting involved um, politically, locally. Um, we know what's happening out there. And if our voices aren't heard, we will be silenced. So please come and join us. Let's get active, organized and mobilized because our presence is necessary. And then in addition to that, we have a mission and governance committee which also has an IDEA subcommittee, and that stands for Inclusion, Diversity, Equity, and, and Accessibility. So if any of those subjects are a concern for you, or if you think the Rainbow Bridge could do a better job at any of those things, we invite you to come to our committees because that's the space where your voices can be heard. So for fundraising, yes, the event you referenced is May 20th. At, that's at the Rehab Gym in Barrie, and I'm so thrilled to be partners with them. They are absolutely big supporters of the LGBTQ plus community. This is an invitational weightlifting competition and block party. So no, we're going to be having fun, of course, first of all, and we're also going to be lifting up our community. So um, plan on that happening um, May 20th. Um, of course, we need volunteers too. Um, I'll be emceeing along with my good friend, Lucifer Matrix. She'll be DJing and it's gonna be a good time. So that's our next event. Um, in addition to that, uh, looking further down the calendar, we have June 10th, which is Barry Pride. So, um, and this is not a benefit for our organization, but we are a part of the organizing effort. Um, that is to benefit Camp Outright of Outright Vermont. And we're super excited to be joining all the other local LGBTQ organizers that are involved in that to be doing our part and making sure that it's a successful event. And if I could say, because I'm super excited about it, on that day, June 10th, there will be a drag story hour happening right here at the Rainbow Bridge Community Center as a part of the festivities for Barry Pride. So we are stoked for that. Um, I hope to make that a regular occurrence in Barry. Um, and I would say to everyone and not just um, adults and also people not in the community and maybe even the haters, I would say, if you haven't been to a drag story hour, you are missing out. Please come and enjoy it. 
It is about being uplifted and knowing that you are special and powerful and magical and beautiful. And that's kind of what drag is about in general. But um, when you go to a show like that, um, or to an event like that, you are going to feel better than when you walked in. So I would encourage all adults and everyone, of course, to come and enjoy it. It's going to be a good time. So with that, I need to say thank you for spending this time with us. I look forward to being able to report the next activity on our events portion of the All Things News Program. And coming back in a year and saying, okay, Sean. What, <laughs> what have we done? I think we'll have done a lot. We've done a lot in a few months and we're gonna, definitely gonna do a lot in 12 months. Thank you and Rainbow Bridge is lucky to have you here. Thank you. And can I just say, if you're out there in the community, um, you know, we're open seven days a week. I'm here Tuesdays and Thursdays, and I would just encourage you to come down and chat with me if you have any questions. And if you're particularly interested in talking to a non-binary trans person who is not judgmental and not quick to anger, I am happy to answer your questions in a friendly, inviting atmosphere. So please just come down. I know you're out there, and I know you need the support, and so that's what we're here for. So come and see me. <laughs> I'll make sure we have all of the contact information. Hi, everybody. I'd like to introduce Ika Thaxton to our show. And uh, welcome, Ika. How are you today? I'm doing well. <laughs> Ika is a poet and works at uh, Momentum uh, at Pride Center of Vermont. So um, let's talk first about, like, are you from Vermont? originally? So I'm originally from Southern California. Um, that was where um, I was born and raised until um, I was about 28 years old. And that's when I moved here to Vermont with my family. So your whole family moved here? Well, not my whole family. So it was uh, me and my partner at the time and our two kids. Uh-huh. Yeah, her family moved up here originally um, because her uh, her dad took a retirement job for Green Mountain Coffee Roasters. He was actually um, president of research and development. And yeah. yeah, and they were kind of like, we're moving to Vermont. We don't want to go alone. Do you want to come with us? And I was looking for a nicer place to raise the kids. So of course I was like, yeah, let's go. But then I was like, wait a minute. It's cold. <laughs> no, not that. I didn't even know where Vermont was. <laughs> really? Because <laughs> this is the early 2000s. You know, Vermont's not even on the map yet. And I know, especially if you're in California, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and Californians, we think the whole world revolves around us. So we're just like, Absolutely. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, so that's I, how you ended up here. Okay. Yeah. So, um, uh, and you work for, the Pride Center of Vermont, and your uh, coordinator of Momentum, correct? Yes, I'm um, the Momentum coordinator, and I'm also one of the coordinators for GLOW, too. Okay, so do you want to tell us a little bit about that before we, we'll, we'll do the, you know, like, what do you do work, and then we'll get into the creative stuff, um, yeah. with your poetry, so, so what do you do there? So with the Momentum program, I work with the 55 and up community, um, where I basically provide, you know, resources and events, um, you know, for for that age group. Um, I I love the work that I do, and um, you know, I'm always open to um, any suggestions and things like that. Um, I think what I'm going to be doing here soon is collaborating with uh, AARP and having them come and join us for some of our socials, like our coffee and conversations, you know, to help answer questions or have a better understanding of what AARP does um, and things like that. I also love working with the senior center down there in Montpelier. Yes. We had that awesome drag bingo. Like oh, I can't yeah, wait to see another event. <laughs> yeah. We need to do that again. Yeah, that was That's amazing. Incredible. And, um, and I know you have like coffee, all coffee hours for momentum right all over the state um right um, uh, at least this area right i mean yeah in, in uh 
I've been doing Washington County and Chittenden County as of right now. Yeah. Uh, and I always enjoy going to those <laughs> when they're in the area here in uh, Montpelier. So um, when did you start there doing this? Um, I've been with the Pride Center for a year now. Okay. And um, and you said you did something else with Pride, which was besides Momentum? Yeah, I just recently joined the GLOW program, which is um, the Women Aligned program. Okay. And what, what does that do? So that one's um, all ages and same thing. Um, it's, uh, I believe they're part of health and wellness. So we, you know, provide information and resources for um, women's health and women aligned um, health. Uh, things like, you know, breast cancer screenings, um, cancer screenings, things like that. And then also the social aspect of it too. So um, let's see, I think the 24th, we're um, having a movie night at Essex Cinemas and we're going to be showing, but I'm a cheerleader. <laughs> <laughs> so if you know anyone that wants to have a fun free movie night, that's going to be happening. It'll be at, um, at like that's six o'clock. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay. I love that movie theater up there. I think it's really nice. Yeah, I actually work there too. <laughs> yeah. In my early 20s, I worked at a concession stand. I mean, uh, 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 is it a concession like at the movie theaters? Yeah, it's just like this. Yeah, yeah the concession yeah. stand. Yeah, it was kind of fun. Yeah. Because um, I got to see free movies, which was, you know, the real place. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I do a little bit more than that there. I do a lot there. <laughs> but yeah, I still get free movies, so. <laughs> Absolutely. That's a big plus. Mm -hmm. um, so writing, um, in addition to all your hard work at the Pride Center, you're a poet. I am. When did you start writing? So I apparently fell in love with poetry from when I was a tiny little baby my dad would read um you know like Dr. Seuss and like things like that to me and I would repeat the entire thing right back to him wow. he thought I was a genius um because he thought I could read when in actuality I was just memorizing everything <laughs> um but ever since I could pick up a pen and write I have been writing poetry um you know I I went through high school. Um, I, uh, I forgot what they called it back then. Um, I know it's like honors and AP and stuff like that now, but it was the highest you can go through as far as like um, writing and literature and English. And then I went on to college and um, part of my degree is in English and writing. So, um, but the whole poetry thing, yeah. Um, I had one class in, in high school where the teacher was like, your grade isn't this great, but I know you write poetry. If you can get me 20 poems in, <laughs> I'll get I mean, 20. I think it was like 20 before, like in a month. And I was like, that's it? <laughs> and I got it in along with my assignments, got an A plus in that class. <laughs> 20, oh, holy cow. That seems like a lot to me. Um, uh, so at a really early age, you started, and, and then when did you start thinking about like publications and did, were you sending your work out all along through college and uh, beyond? So um, because I was a young mom, <laughs> a lot of it stayed on the back burner, never stopped writing though. I've never stopped. I've, I always journal. I have about seven books I'm writing. One of them is a, a book series, fiction, um, sci-fi fantasy type thing. Um, but I'm always writing and always writing poetry. Um, it wasn't until lockdown where I was kind of like, you know, I'm, I'm sitting on like, I think at that point it was like 250 poems. Mm -hmm. So I thought, you know what, I have time. I can edit them myself. And I'm going to go in and give self-publishing a try just for fun, get my feet wet to see how it goes. And um, so I published my, you know, my 
it's actually like my second book of poetry. Um, but this one was my pride and joy and my baby. <laughs> and I made quite a few sales with it. So I was very proud of myself. Um, yep. Yeah. And, you know, I just, I, I don't do well on the marketing end of it. So if you're amazing at marketing and you can like build a online presence, um, self-publishing will work great for you. Um, for me, I'm not the greatest at marketing. So it was just kind of, you know, just posting on Facebook or my personal Instagram, or um, I have a blog, I posted it there. So, you know, I made quite a few sales, nothing to make me rich. <laughs> but it was fun and my my book's been sent all around the world too which is really yeah. cool self-publishing you know you have to do a lot of self-promotion i find that hard um, it is hard you no know, we have to like talk yourself up and you know all that stuff is really i find it to be hard um and so but you found that a rewarding experience would you recommend that people try it at least for their first book or um, if you have experience editing, it's so th there's a lot of um, software out there that is that is user friendly. Um, I want to say the hardest aspect of it is the editing part. Um, and I don't have a whole lot of patience. <laughs> so, you, you know, you you have your first draft and then you have to go through and edit and then um, you have like the the drafts sent to you and then you're you're looking through it and you're just like oh I don't like these margins I don't like this you know you find one wrong letter <laughs> and then you have to go back you know redo everything um so it it is it, it's a process it, it it's not something you can jump in and do quickly at all mm -hmm. um it, it takes a few months if not longer depending on like your experience and the only thing that saved me is the fact that I've been writing so long and I read a lot and, you know, I went to school for English. So, <laughs> yeah. so I, I have some of that. Um, but yeah, I mean, you could always hire an editor too. Um, but the self-publishing, it, it's not an easy thing to do. Um, and especially for someone like me, I'm very particular about the way I want the formatting to look. I want, um, I like to have a very clean, um, simple look to my writing. Um, I'm very minimalist. Um, so yeah, it, it all depends on the person really. And like how much time you can put into it too. And That's there's different factor. types, isn't there? Like hybrid and where they have an editor there or, well, I, I, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't done that yet, but. Yeah, there's a lot of different avenues. Um, I jumped in head first. <laughs> And I was like, I'm going to do this start to finish. And you know what? It was lockdown. I had nothing else to do. So, and it still took me about a month. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that was without any work. And oh, no yeah, distractions. Yeah. <laughs> well, that sounds great. And um, do you read around at all? Do you read around town or do you have you had readings uh, in the area? And I'm, I'm pretty shy. So I haven't. I haven't done any readings. I really need to get out there and do it. <laughs> it's a good way to sell your books too, you know, I think. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, so, well, maybe you'll get involved in the one here in Montpelier. We'll see how that goes and see what your time schedule is. And that'll be fun. So would you like, would you mind reading a poem or two for our audience? And, um, and, and you said they could, you could buy the book on Am. You could buy your poetry on Amazon. It is on Amazon. Um, also, um, if anyone has Instagram, I'm on Instagram also, and you could just direct message me. Okay. And we could do it that way too. And your book is titled Moonlit Tea. Yes, Moonlit Tea. Okay. A lot of times when I'm writing, it's, you know, at night and at night I drink a lot of tea, like chamomile tea and, and stuff. So I was like, oh, <laughs> that's when a lot of this was written. Um, so this one, um, this particular poem that I wrote, um, my, my dog passed away, who I had for a very long time. And she was there for me 
um, you know, with my kids and going through college, my divorce. So um, very attached to her to this day. I still can't own another dog. And it's been um, going on five years since she's passed. And she was just such a special creature to me. And so a lot of these poems are about her and my healing process. Okay. Going through it. So, um, okay. Let me see if I can get through this. <laughs> I might write you some pretty words when all the feelings are gone. I might paint you a pretty picture when everything feels wrong. I might give you a peaceful gaze while listening to a, sight, to a sad song. I might smile through all the pain because the pain never lasts too long. It's the moments where I feel crazy that, it, that never seem to go away. I have to keep myself moving in order for normalcy to stay. The business and noise of others is what helps keep the sane this way. Though I wish that the quiet of your arms could chase the demons all away. Thank you, that was lovely. And what was your dog's name? Her name was Petunia. Um, let me see. Would you like to read another for us? Yeah, here's another one that you can definitely tell us about her. Um, there's pieces of you sprinkled everywhere, the little love notes to remind me that you were once here. It brings me great sadness, but also great joy, a girl's best friend. Thank you. Um, so I think we'll leave the audience on that note. Thank you so much for coming in. And we'll talk to you soon. Take care. <laughs> Bye. Thank you for joining us. And until next time, remember, resist.